along a barren stretch of the Atlantic coast, a few miles from Boston, on a chilly day in 1931, a lonely figure comes in search of his past. Is this all that remains to mark the place where history was made? Has the whole world forgotten what happened here? What you doing, mister? Oh, just remembering, son. I used to live here. When? A long time ago. And you realize that radio was invented right on this very spot? Yeah, I heard my dad say something about that. Well, I'm the man who invented it. Honestly? That's the honest truth. Nice to have met you, Miss Marconi. <laughs> Not Marconi. Fessenden. Reginald Fessenden of Quebec. Scientist. Inventor. Former colleague of Edison and Westinghouse. Revisiting the scene of his triumph. Grant Rock, Massachusetts. After 25 years, only to find it, like him, abandoned and forgotten. Yet what his genius gave us remains. He set out to prove that signals and voices could fly through the air and no one could stop him. It's what makes a winner. Miss Flint? Oh, Professor Fessenden, won't you go right in? They're expecting you. Professor Fessenden. Good day, gentlemen. Mr. Given, how do you do? Pleased to meet you. Do sit down. Even before we met your patent attorney, Mr. Wilkett here, Mr. Given and I have heard glowing reports about your success with wireless telegraphy. Yes, well, you realize, gentlemen, I have more exciting things to offer you than wireless telegraphy. Well, I'm sure you have. What with your scientific knowledge and our considerable know-how in the world of business, there's no limit to what we can do together. But right now, we're more interested in telegraphy. Precisely. Mr. Wilkett, I presume you've outlined for the professor the terms under which we're prepared to set up a new company? Uh, yes, Mr. Walker, I have. And you find them satisfactory, sir? In general, I do. Splendid. But I am concerned about the condition that your company would own my patents. Well, it's not just our company. You'll own 45% of the stock, more shares than either Mr. Given and I have. Yes, but at the moment, those patents are owned entirely by my own company in Canada. Then I guess you shouldn't have any trouble raising the money in Canada, eh? <laughs> uh, the proposal seems fair enough. As your patent attorney, it appears logical to me that you should assign the relevant patents to the new company. You realize, of course, I'd need a monthly salary. Of course. We're prepared to be more than just generous in that regard. Well, what do you say to that, Professor? Very well, Wolcott. Draw up the necessary papers and let's get on with it. An excellent decision. <clears throat> Have you thought what to call the new company? The National Electric Signaling Company. NESCO. Very mm. good. All right. NESCO it is. The following year, 1903, three stations were completed. It's really quite simple, Mr. Armour. No, yes, but I... Just follow the changes as I have marked them. His wife, Helen, watched and wondered how long it could go on at this pace. I think you'll find this the appropriate schematic, Mr. Stein. Thank you, Professor. There we are, Mr. Walker. That's the musical signal. Splendid. Splendid. Not a great distance, we will agree, but the clarity is there. Congratulations. Who's Michael Faraday? Michael Faraday? Don't they teach you about him in school? They will someday. <laughs> Michael Faraday is the genius who first related magnetism to electricity. Oh. Professor, it's getting late, and I do have a long ride ahead of me. Yes, yes, of course. All right, Ken, run along now. Well, things are going well, you say? Absolutely first rate. In our transmissions to Jersey City and Philadelphia, less than 2% of the messages had to be retransmitted. Smoke? Yes, thank you. 
Tell me, how long do you estimate before you'll have the system perfected? Oh, we'll be ready any day now. Things are going so well, I'm sure we'll be able to sell the Navy ship-to-shore equipment and most of the Merchant Marine, for that matter. Professor Fessenden, I think I must make it quite clear that Mr. Gibbon and I don't intend to go into the business of manufacturing wireless equipment. Why on earth not? That's where the money's to be made. And at this point, I'm sure we could all use a little of that. We prefer to leave the manufacturing to those with experience. No. Our aim is to sell the system to a manufacturer and profit from royalties. I see. I wasn't aware that's what you had in mind. No, what we badly need now at this point is something that will attract public attention to Nesco. I have the very thing. If you're prepared to wait, I'm sure that any day now I'll be able to transmit voices. Transmit voices? What earthly use would that be? Well, you said we needed the publicity. My wireless telephony will take the whole world by storm. Now, hold, hold it a minute here, Professor. No, what I was talking about was some sort of a stunt, like uh, transmitting across the Atlantic. If Marconi could do it... Marconi, he can't and he never will, not with his system. What about your system? If I put my mind to it, I've no doubt I could give you two-way transatlantic wireless telegraphy. That's incredible. If Nesco were first, think of the jump we'd have in the competition. Yes, but if we were first with wireless telephony... Professor, let me make this abundantly clear. Mr. Given and I are not interested in your wireless telephony. We're competing with Marconi, not Alexander Graham Bell. Well, you realize that it would cost a good deal. We'd have to set up a station in Britain the same as this one. If you're sure it'll work, don't worry about the money. Of course, it can work. Well, then we've got to book your passage to England right away so you can pick out a site. Not necessary. I've already picked it. Where in England do you intend to locate? A little town named Macrahanish. And it's not England. Scotland. Well, that's the last of it. Now all we can do is wait for them to assemble it in Scotland. Pray they get it right. Of course they'll get it right. I trained them myself, Mr. Rama. So you take good care of those crates. They may want to return them filled with Scotch whiskey. The amplifiers were redesigned, the tuners improved, and the interference preventers brought to the highest state of excellence. Yet, the news from Scotland continues to be negative. New paragraph. I have checked and rechecked my calculations and feel certain they are correct. Yes. Today's cable from Macrahanish. Maybe it's just not possible. Don't talk rubbish. Of course it's possible. And I'm going to prove it. Don't worry, Mr. Pennell. If we contact Scotland, you'll be the first to know. Try it again. In order to transmit voice, I need an alternator capable of producing 100,000 cycles. And I wait two years. What do they send me? One that produces 50. If there's nothing for it, I'll have to tear it down and rebuild it myself. Excuse me, Professor, but I... I feel certain you'd only be wasting your time. I can see I am wasting my time with you, Mr. Armour. So please consider this as your notice, effective immediately. Professor, we're all under a great deal of strain. Perhaps if you waited until tomorrow. Are you presuming to tell me what I should do? I'm just trying to avert something. That's none of your business. Very well. You may take this as your notice, too. Perhaps I can get some people here who know what they're doing. Good, I'm 
glad you're here. I have to talk to you about the accounts. Oh, not now, dear heart. I've had enough aggravation for one day. We're badly over our estimates. We bought a great deal of equipment never authorized by Mr. Walker. Blast Mr. Walker. Can't run to him for every last piece of wire. No, but when we overspend by $28,000... That much, is it? I'm sure he'd pay it gladly if we'd only done what we set out to do. You will. Yes, but when? It's of no earthly use if someone beats us to it. And I can't think what's gone wrong. Probably something ridiculously simple. Mike, you rascal! <laughs> I'll plug it in. <laughs> Let him, he pulled it out. Oh, that's the easy part. It takes skill to get it working again. Well, since you're so clever, I should send you to... That's it! What? Mr. Armour! Mr. Armour, come here, I need you! Ah, how soon can you be ready to leave? I, I, I don't know, sir. Since you only just now discharged me. Well, I don't mean that. I'm sending you to Scotland. But what about my notice? Oh, look, I, I apologize for that. And, and to make amends, I'm raising your salary 10%. Stein, too, of course. I'm convinced Macri Hanish isn't properly tuned. And you're the man to set it right. Well, don't just stand there, man. There's no time to lose. Yes, sir. Now we'll show them. <laughs> there. Oh. That's it. Receiving you loud and clear, Brant Rock. Credit due armor. We've done it. We've done it! Oh, oh, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have just witnessed the first transatlantic wireless hookup. Congratulations, Professor. <laughs> well, don't just stand there, Mr. Stein. Get out the champagne. Yes, sir. Well done, sir. <laughs> oh, congratulations, darling. I'm so very proud of you. It's a great achievement. Yes, well, now that I've given Messrs. Walker and Gibbon their blasted da de dit da de dit I can get on with what I want to do. Not quite. Miss Bent, I want you to write a letter to the editor of the Boston Globe. Inviting him to Brant Rock on Christmas Eve for a very special surprise. What will Mr. Walker, Mr. Given say? After today, my dear, it matters very little what they say. I've won, you see. Hey, Sparks. Aren't you going to join the party? Yeah. Got a message today from Brant Rock saying to listen in tonight at six for something special. Special what? I don't know. That's why I'm listening. That was a phonograph recording of Handel's Largo. We will now have a solo sung by one of our engineers, Mr. Stein, accompanied by me on the violin. <laughs> I must apologize. As it appears that Mr. Stein will be unable to perform for us this evening, so those of you who are listening to this transmission will have to be content with a violin solo by Reginald Fessenden. Hey, Rudy! Yeah. Hey, you guys, come and listen to this.
I would like to end this transmission with those inspiring words from the Bible. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men of goodwill. We will be transmitting again one week from tonight on New Year's Eve. In the meantime, Merry Christmas, everyone. From United Fruit Company Steamship Carolina in Caribbean waters, entire transmission received with great clarity. Only regret failure of Mr. Stein to perform. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Penel. <laughs> good, Professor. Congratulations, Professor. An incredible demonstration. You know, we've been hearing about transmitting the human voice for some time now, and you're the one who pulled it off. Yes, well, I hope someone will point that out to Mr. Marconi. Well, people will soon forget Marconi. Sitting in their living rooms, listening to music and voices coming out of thin air. The name of Fessenden is going to make the front pages of newspapers all over the world. Excuse me, sir, but just to set the record straight, I should point out that the music was merely a novelty to attract attention. The future of this invention lies in the telephone industry. We're out to compete with Graham Bell. Mr. Walker, surely that's what we've been after. Can't we take him to the cat doctor? It's in every newspaper in the country. He's awful sick. What difference does that make? It's still publicity for the company. Talk to your father as soon as he's off the telephone. Very well. Yes, first thing in the morning. Preposterous. We've caught the imagination of the world and Walker and Gibbons are furious. There's nothing for it. I'll have to find the capital to buy them out. Reg, there's something the matter with Mike. Hmm. What's the matter with him? He's very sick, Father. Please do something. Mike? Hey there, old puss. Can we take him to the doctor? Right away, Ken. Then I have to catch a train to Pittsburgh. <laughs> calling from Brant Rock. Could I speak with my husband, please? I'm sorry he's not here. We're expecting him, but he hasn't arrived yet. Oh, dear. May I speak with Mr. Walker, then? I'm sorry he's not here, either. I, I have to talk to somebody right away. A man came with an order to remove all the professor's papers and documents and ship them to Pittsburgh. They're carrying them out right now. I'm afraid I don't know anything about that, but I'll give the professor your message the moment he arrives. Goodbye, Mrs. Fessenden. Miss... Oh, dear God. Where is Reg? No, gentlemen. You may wind up the company only on condition that you pay me $330,000 for my patents as for our original agreement. You forget we own 55% of the stock. You don't tell us. We tell you. What I do not forget is that I have worked for the company for six years, and during that time I have contributed over 150 patents. For which you have been handsomely paid. What? $300 a month. Well, I'm afraid it's perfectly clear, Professor, that we could not reach agreement on this matter. So it looks like Mr. Given and I will have to proceed as we see fit. And I, sir, will have to resort to my own recourse in order to protect my position. Good day, gentlemen. Reginald Aubrey Fessenden? Yes. 
I hereby serve you with an injunction made on this date by the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania enjoining you to cease and desist from any further participation in the affairs of the National Electric Signaling Company and prohibiting you physical access from all the company's said properties, with particular reference to the company's wireless station at Brant Rock, Massachusetts. I presume you have no objection to my returning to collect my family and my few personal possessions. You know me well enough to have learned I do not easily give up when faced with problems. I assure you my determination to transmit the human voice will seem a mere whim compared to my dedication to seeing you both in hell. Anything so desolate. You're right, my dear. It always was a dreary place. But cheer up. I'm sure once we're back in Canada, we'll find something much grander, much more suited to us. Oh, Reg, I didn't mean that. Take those last few bags out, Ken. There's a good fella. Yes, Father. Aha! They missed these. Why, my drawing for the turbine-driven electric motor for ships. And look here, an amplifier for musical instruments. Where the fortune of it's properly exploited, there's enough work here to keep me out of mischief indefinitely. You'll never be out of mischief, Reginald Fessenden. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Father? We're starting afresh, Ken. What better way to start than with laughter, eh? Come on, let's get on with it. The court battles that followed lasted 20 years. In the end, Reginald Fessenden won everything, except 